Thomas coming to you with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Voltron Defender of the Universe Yellow Line and Hunk, exclusively from MaddieCollector.com. Now, as I explained in my, my Red Lion review, these figures and these lions are being released on a bi-monthly basis. So every other month we're getting a new lion. And this is actually the second lion in that whole set. And as you can see, nice white mailing box. Now, <laughs> I already kind of opened the side of it. Um, this is actually kind of amusing to me. Um, I don't want to knock over my camera, but uh, they actually packaged him in here upside down. Um, that's his tail, that, and oh, there's me. Uh, that's really kind of obnoxious, and I actually opened it from the wrong side, I suppose, but uh, you remove this a little bit, reach inside here, and Hunk's inside here. Come here. Come on, Hunk. Come here. I guess I could have taken out the lion first, uh, but there we have Hunk. We'll set that off to the side. And then this guy, we're just going to slide him out like so. Whoop. And here you have him. As you see, the yellow lion and Hunk. Now starting things off first, here we have the packaging for Hunk. As you can see, really nice yellow packaging. Awesome looking artwork here on the side. You got the figure in this clear open window, which absolutely looks nice. You see his alternate head and also the key. Flip around here on the back. And it says that Hunk pilots the Yellow Lion. The Yellow Lion, which forms Voltron's left leg, is piloted by the mighty Hunk. Hunk can crush the competition and last the longest in a fight. But he is also lovable and has a heart of gold. As you can see, the, the, the handguard is included here to create the, uh, the blazing sword. So getting all five figures, you create the blazing sword. And the only thing that you get with this one is... The, the hand guard, which is kind of blah. See that hunk fits inside the yellow lion. The key stand, or the key also is a stand for the figure. See the figure himself right there. And that's about it. Uh, nothing else too terribly exciting. I do love the packaging and I love the uh, the holographic nature or so, or the shiny nature of the Voltron logo. That's absolutely awesome. So, hunk. Cool. And next up, we have the yellow line himself. Now, I absolutely love the packaging on these. Uh, even the red line I thought was wonderful looking. I love the fact that they actually have like kind of a, a scene here where the actual lions lay dormant. And as you can see, you got a really nice kind of desert scene. You see the kind of lion mountain there in the background. You got a nice picture of the yellow lion right there. You also see his uh, weapon up here in the corner. Flip around and then obviously, you know, there's the front. I absolutely love the packaging on this. You can see that if you collect all five, you can create an epic 23 inch Voltron. And you can see that this guy forms his left leg. Also, that hunk fits inside the lion. You can instantly transform <laughs> from Voltron's left leg to a lion, which, again, it, 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 the debate rages on about why they really need to have him transform from leg or limb to lion. Because it's usually the other way around that we see it, but oh well. And it says that the yellow line is piloted by Hunk. And you get a little bit more of a, a read up here, and it says that Hunk, a strong man with a hearty appetite and a heart of gold, pilots the yellow lion, which forms Voltron's left leg. Yellow line was hidden beneath an ancient sphinx in the desert until all the lions were found, and Voltron was needed once more. Absolutely cool. I love the packaging, like I said on here. Very nice, very wonderful, and a lot bigger than I thought. Uh, I, I really am constantly amazed with, by the size of these when I get them. And this being one of the legs is obviously bigger than the red line, but we'll get into that here in a little bit. So let's get the yellow line and hung open up and out of their packaging and see how cool they actually are. Alright guys, so here we have the yellow line and hunk opened up and out of their packaging. And starting things off first, we're going to take a look at his accessory. Now this is his uh, uh, arm guard or hand guard or whatever, which I'm a little meh about to be totally honest. Uh, when you compare it to what we previously got with Lance, uh, I mean, th this just seems kind of, I, I don't know, anticlimactic or something. I mean, because this thing is big and massive and this is just kind of tiny, but uh, we're going to connect that by just plugging that in there and you can see that uh, that does move so you get a range of motion there I guess I guess to kind of get it out of the way uh, I wonder if it can come back off once you connect it um, doesn't really seem like it can come off very well once you connect it so once you connect it you seem to be kind of stuck with it but we're, we're getting somewhere guys uh, this is the second piece that we've gotten and while it's you know kind of underwhelming compared to the giant handle that we got before I mean, I do really still like the way that this whole thing is turning out, so I'm very excited about getting this. And like I said, this thing is big. It's, it's going to be a big sword. Now, coming to Hunk himself, um, 
I, I'm, I'm again kind of mixed about this guy. And now people will probably ask, well, why is he orange and not yellow? Well, this, this is accurate. This is how he actually looked in the cartoon. And all this stuff is modeled after the cartoon. Now, the original uh, Panache playset toys had him as being yellow, just like the yellow lion. But this is how the cartoon actually looked. And the figure in general isn't bad. He's got a very nice head sculpt. But my biggest problem that I have with the head, um, at least for me, kind of looks like it, it, it it's not really part of his body i mean you can kind of see right there uh mostly it's the hair but you got also the the flesh tone that kind of hangs over and kind of gives a, a square look to that head it's not too terribly bad but it's not that great either uh, and then you can see again some bad paint applications it's not really paint applications it's just like the mold of the plastic uh, especially like here in the arm kind of discoloration going on there um, hopefully that's coming across, but you can see a little splotch right there. This arm's really kind of bad up here in the bicep. Uh, it's, it's not terrible, but I really wish it would look a little bit better. Or should I say more clean, I guess. Now in terms of his uh, other accessory, uh, he does come with an alternate head that you just take, pop that off, pop this on, and get on there. Uh, this one, you can really kind of see that there's a problem with, with, with the head. Again, zooming in, you can kind of see that his head doesn't really look like it's part of his body. I mean, it seems to kind of float a little bit there. And I have that as far down as I can possibly get it. So, I mean, just the neck is kind of disturbing me in this. Which I guess is just a, a nitpick of sorts. But I, I really do wish that for an adult collectible, uh, those kind of things were fixed just a little bit. But you can't see really nice helmet on here. You got some beautiful blue goggles. One thing that does kind of suck is uh, they, they really did actually glue the helmet on there pretty good. So when you remove it, the helmet doesn't come off like the Lance figure did previously. Uh, that actually kind of sucks. I mean, I can probably fix that. I mean, I could probably heat this up and be able to remove the glue on there. But I love being able to have just like a separate helmet for him, or for Lance specifically. And then in general, for his articulation, you know, the head rotates from left to right. The arms are on this pin and socket joint that rotate. You get a nice range of motion there. They uh, bend here at the elbow. They rotate at the elbow. They bend downward. He rotates here at the waist. He's got this uh, molded in plastic gun, which... You know, I'm, I'm still kind of on the fence. I don't mind it too terribly much, but I would probably like it if they actually put some more detail in there. Uh, maybe make the holster a different color than the gun, just to kind of uh, differentiate it. Uh, the legs move in and out. They, uh, d they don't really move back a lot, again, because of the butt, so you don't get much range of motion there. Moves forward. And then his knees, th the, the knees on these really do kind of bug me. His, that's as far back as his knee bends, um, which is okay, but then when you bend it forward... He bends further forward at the knee than he does backwards. I mean, you can see here. I mean, I have both knees bent. And, and you can see that it bends. That, that doesn't make any sense to me. And, you know, looking at it, I can't really blame it on the mold here of the upper thigh. Because as you can see right down here, the, uh, the front part of the kneecap comes down further. Um, so, I, I mean... It's just that this cut right back here isn't as big as it should be uh, to allow more motion. You know, I mean, you got more of a cut going on the front, it seems, than the back. So that's kind of unfortunate, but I, I still love the fact that they thought to include these figures. I, you, you can't, in my opinion, have this set without having these figures to go along with it. And I think it's absolutely wonderful that they did include that. Now, as for his other accessory, he does come with this key that, you know, you could see earlier does uh, dub also as his stand. But get him out of the way it also does have a little bit of a gimmick that when you come down here now this is a little bit different than what we got with the red line if you remember you took the red line you push it in and then you could open it side to side this one you plug it in and this is you actually have to plug it in and kind of grab it and uh that lifts straight back oh come on now you silly silly door that opens straight back and you have his cockpit now that that's a little bit weird to me I don't mind it as much. Uh, it's just a little bit different. Um, now, one thing that I will say is, Mattel, please stop letting your factory workers apply these stickers. Put the sticker sheet in with the package. Let us as the collectors apply those because I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to have to pick up my camera and show you guys this. I don't know if you can see that very well, but this sticker is like completely on crooked, which 
As a collector myself, that really annoys the crap out of me. It absolutely does. I'm so finicky when I apply stickers that a Cricut sticker drives me nuts. And then you see another sticker here. Oh, well, no, you don't. Uh, you see another sticker there on that side. Knock down, <laughs> hunk. And then you got another sticker on that side. And that's it for the detail on the inside, but that's not bad. Uh, I just wish they wouldn't do that with the sticker. And then just like Lance, you can take your hunk figure. You can have them actually come around here and sit inside the guy, getting his feet underneath there, set that in. There you have him actually riding it, looking absolutely cool. And then you close this and he's now piloting the lion as he's always been meant to do. Now many of you that follow me and watched my review of the Red Lion know, uh, after I initially got that figure, I was very kind of hesitant about the rest of the Voltron figures. And the Yellow Lion has really helped me to not be as nervous anymore. Now granted, the Green Lion, I'm probably gonna have the similar problems with it, but the Blue Lion probably should be good because I really do like this guy. Now in terms of his articulation, his head, his head moves up and down uh, but if you go too far it locks and then you have to hit the button here on the underside of them to release the head uh, now you can have it go like that or all the way up uh, which is going to be his leg mode um, but I, I do like the fact that you can make, make it move up and down it just kind of sucks that it only locks in a total of well really three positions you can have it all the way down halfway and then all the way. Uh, now his mouth is also articulated. He's got uh, ratchet joints in there that move up and down. His head rotates left, well, all the way around. One thing that I will say is that I love the fact that the ratchet joints on this aren't nearly as tight as the red lions. If you remember, when I would rotate the red lions, the legs would pop back out of position, which really was making me nervous a lot. So I do love that. I love the face on that. That is just really cool. Uh, I, 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 I don't know why. I just really love the yellow lion. I, I, I honestly don't know. Uh, now, in terms of his other articulation, his arms up here, you see one, two, three. He's got three joints here, ratchet joints. Um, his legs, let's see. We got one, two, three and then it locks in. So you got three individual ratchet joints there that these are all on ratchet joints. So you get a nice range of motion with those as well. Basically what it's coming down to is this guy's a whole lot more poseable than the red line was. And then, oops, sorry about that. <laughs> and then the, uh, the back legs here also on nice ratchet joints. So again, nice range of motion. And then these all bend up. Uh, you got one, two, three, and just yeah unfortunately two joints there but that's not bad and then the uh the ankles are very well articulated the actual tail is also articulated that's not on a spring so you get a nice range of motion with that you can pose that however you really want and the, in, in my opinion this is a far better lion than the red lion was i mean this thing is just absolutely wonderful and really kind of fun to play with and I, I really wish that they would have went into uh, the Red Lion and did the same stuff with him that they did with this guy. Now, again, the gimmick for this is that he can transform into the Voltron's leg. Well, specifically, you can transform him into Voltron's leg. And then the gimmick is that he transforms back into the lion, which... Eh, okay, so first what you do with the, with the tail, you just fold this back, and unlike the uh, the red line, you don't have to lift anything open. This is just, it just fits inside here. Um, it's kind of hard to get out sometimes because I don't have fingernails, but it just folds inside there just like so. Then you take this, fold these back, fold that up, angle that in just like so. Do that on that side as well. Now, you can take it and you can position it like this. Uh, it really kind of depends on how you want. I think the actual animation uh, had them folding in like that, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I actually watched the episode uh, or episodes. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Just kind of make, makes it look a little bit better. And then take the head, fold that all the way up, bring these in. Now, there, there's a couple things with this. Uh, I do believe the actual instructions tell you to start off like this. And, you know, you can have it like that if you really, really wanted to. Um, well, that joint kind of 
sucks. Okay, there we go. Um, if you push it too far because of the, the ratchet joint here in the wrist, it doesn't have enough flex to actually keep this locked in. So what you're actually supposed to do is take it and fold it back to help create kind of a heel for this guy. But in addition to that, you also have this section which folds back, and now you have a big giant heel for the guy. And here you have him in his leg mode, and it's ridiculously big. Here, hold on. I'm away from the, I had to pull the camera away just so I can get it all in frame, but that's a really big leg. Just how big is this leg? That's how big this leg is. In case you guys don't recognize that, that's Generation 1 Fortress Maximus, the biggest transformer ever. And as you can see, the actual leg for Fort Max is a little bit smaller than the actual leg for Voltron. Now, I don't know how big that thigh is going to be for Voltron, but this thing is huge. I mean, that is just unbelievable how big this thing is going to be. Uh, now, again, the gimmick, and you can see right in here, this is where the thigh for Voltron will slide in and attach. And then there's actually a little button here, which I'm assuming that you'll push to release him uh, from the main torso of Voltron itself. Now, to transform him back again, the gimmick on here really kind of sucks. Because, honestly, it shouldn't be going in reverse. So it, it, it's kind of unfortunate. It's probably easier to do it this way. But it still kind of sucks nonetheless. Now, all you have to do, take this section, fold this back down, and then push this button. And one thing that's actually cool is, again, because of the way that this is, you don't have another button to push. You only have this one button here on the bottom. But you push it, and bling, he comes flying out. Now, one thing that I do like actually doing, uh, fold this up, fold this up, fold this if you keep these back legs like so, uh, which probably doesn't look as good, but it, it's a little bit more accurate to the cartoon. If you keep them like this and don't fold them up like that, when you do that, all of his legs are in the proper position. Uh, now, if you do it the other way, you have to fold the legs, or the feet, I'm sorry, back out, um, which kind of sucks, but oh well, what are you going to do? You just kind of have to kind of sort of live with it, I guess. But there you have the yellow lion. For size comparison, here you see him next to the red line, and as you can see, there is a considerable size difference between these guys. I mean, the yellow lion obviously is going to be his leg, so or Voltron's leg, so he's going to be a lot bigger. But the, the just the sheer size, just in general, is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I mean, this thing is, I, I'm just so amazed at how big he's going to be. And one final bit is he, uh, just like the red line, he does come with a dagger here that you can just open up in a big motorcycle drill just drove by. And then you can have him hold it in his mouth. Um, he seems to hold it a little bit better when you fold that in like that. So, um, I mean, that, that's really kind of cool that they decide to include a weapon with this guy. I, I do really kind of like that itself. Now, overall, when it comes down to it, like I said, even with the red line, I still always recommended these figures. My red line just had a lot of quality control problems, and some of the design choices for it really kind of left me like, ugh, I, I really hope that's not what they're going to do with all these. But the yellow line, in my opinion, really comes through and really does represent a lot of my hopes initially for this whole setup. Now, granted, there are still some kind of problems, like I, I would love it if the uh, the gray arms were a little bit more metallic, uh, maybe if the yellow was a little bit more metallic, uh, if he actually had his number here on the top. Now, I know why they didn't include that kind of stuff is because, they're, I mean, they're trying to stay as true to the cartoon as possible, and I do appreciate that. Just for me, I would have probably preferred it if it was, I don't know, done up a little little bit more for adult collectors. Now, like I said earlier, unfortunately, this figure is available only through MaddieCollector.com. And I say unfortunately because that being the case, he's already sold out. If I'm not mistaken, this guy actually sold out in just a few hours. So I'm definitely happy to see that people are enjoying these and wanting to get them, especially this yellow one, because I really think that this guy is well worth it. And if you're going to get the yellow one, you might as well have gotten the red one, you might as well get the green one, you might as well get the blue one, and you might as well get the black one, because why would you just want one? But uh, that's about it, guys. So until next time, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optobotomus. I'll talk to you later.